And so I've sorted the information from the problem and I have a set of information on the value of the mix, uh, dollar value, and then I have a set of information that has to do with the amount. All right. Now, I consider this two hamster level because there's actually a piece of information you need to write the equation that hasn't been explicitly given to you, meaning you have to infer it from the problem. So let's go ahead and define our variables because, oh, and I'm actually going to use letters that make sense to the problem. So I'm going to say R equals the number of kilograms of raisins, and then N equals the number of kilograms of nuts. And so this is me defining my two variables, and it's actually better if you pick letters that go back to the problem. So this mixture problem has some kind of unit rate, and then it has multiplied by a uh, some kind of independent variable and it's going to equal the dependent variable and in our case it's price per kilogram times number of kilograms equals the total price okay so this is the fundamental equation that's dictating this word problem so I can make a table, and this table will work for all mixture problems. So the columns of the table are going to be this fundamental equa equation. So it's the price per kilograms, the number of kilograms, and then the total price. And then your rows of your table are going to be the components of the mixture and the mixture itself. So raisins, nuts, and then the mix, okay? And it's pretty straightforward. You just have your components, the whole mixture, and then your two attributes that when multiplied together give you this dependent variable. And so then I just plug in the things I know. So I know that raisins were $3.50, and then nuts were 4.75, and the mix was 4. And then I know that this was R, and this is N, and this is 20. All right, so then I have this equation that relates the columns. So this column times this column equals this column. So 3.5R, 4.75N, and then 80. So these, this column here represents the total price of the raisins, the total price of the nuts, and the total price of the entire mixture. And my two equations come from this table. If I look at this row here, raisins and nuts is 20 in total, so R plus N equals 20. And if I look at this column of value, it's 3.5R plus 4.75N equals 80. And these two equations constitute my system that I need to solve the problem. Now to look at the dreaded rate times distance problem, same direction. So you just read the word problem, and I drew a picture, a very crude picture of the situation, and I've put all the information I know in the problem in there. And so, you know, the situation is, okay, so Bob leaves before Yardley, but he goes slower, and Yardley leaves later, but she goes faster, and your job is to figure out when Yardley passes Bob. And so in this kind of situation, when you have people going in the same direction, a lot of times you want to know when someone catches up or when they pass them, which means you are looking for when they're at the same place at the same time. And so that tells you about the distance. Now, I don't consider this a two hamster problem. I was just using them as Bob and Yardley. All right. So let's uh, do this table wise. And I like doing my rate times distance problems in a table like the mixture problems because the fundamental equation that dictates a rate times distance problem is rate times time equals the distance. So that's always going to be my three columns, rate, time, and distance. And my rows are always going to be the people traveling. So I have Bob and I have Yardley. And so I put the information I know into the table. I know that he is going 25 miles per hour and she is going 40 miles per hour. Now I don't know the distance 
But I do know that in order for Yardley to pass Bob, she has to catch up to him. And since they're leaving from the same direction, then I'm trying to figure out when their distances are the same. So I want to know when their distances are equal to each other, which tells me how to set my equation up. So now let's look at the time issue. So I want to know at what time. And I can't have t for time be a clock time. I'm going to have t be a time in hours traveled by one of my travelers, either Bob or Yardley. And so let's just pick Bob. So t is the time traveled by Bob in hours. And I have to pick hours because the unit of rate is miles per hour. Right, so this hour, if it were like miles per minute, then I would pick minutes, but it's miles per hour, so I'm going to pick hours. And so Bob's travel time is t. Now, I don't want to create another variable if I can avoid it. And in this case, I don't have to um, because I know that Yardley has traveled for half an hour less time than Bob because she left at 5.30. And so my options are to write either t minus 30 or t minus one-half for Yardley's time. Um, and then I go back to my units and I know, well, t means time in hours. And if I say t minus 30, that means she left 30 hours after Bob, so it's not that. So I know that Yardley's time is t minus one-half. So be very conscious of the units here. So that means Bob's distance traveled was 25t, and Yardley's distance traveled is 40 times t minus 1 half. Now I only have one variable, so I only need one equation, at which point I use the fact that Yardley has to catch up before she passes Bob. So I know these two distances have to be equal. And that's what's special about rate times distance problems, is there's always something they don't give you explicitly. You have to kind of figure it out from the situation. So the equation I need to solve is 25t equals 40 times t minus 1 half. So this is 4 thirds of an hour, but that's actually not what the question asks me. The question asks at what time. That means clock time. So I have to convert this 4 thirds of an hour into something on a clock. So this is 1 hour. 4 thirds is 1 and 1 third, which is 1 hour and 20 minutes. And so now I have to add one hour and 20 minutes to somebody's time. And since I'm very specific in my variable definition, and I say time is Bob's, T is t Bob's time in hours, then I know that I have to use the 5 p.m. Had I said T was Yardley's time in hours, then I would have to add to the 5.30. Um, but I used Bob, so that means at 6.20 p.m. they catch up. So that's not answering the question either, because the question asks, at what time does Yardley pass him? So the instant after 6.20, the instant after 6.20 um, is when she passes. So I have to write the word after in front. So it's after 6.20 p.m. that Yardley passes Bob. This problem, I drew the picture. Um, very crude picture to show that they're kind of meeting in between them. And so with this picture, I have all the information I need to solve the problem. And realize that this distance where they meet up is not halfway because he's going faster than she is and they travel the same amount of time. So do not assume that they meet at the 30 kilometer mark. They're just racing towards each other until they, they hit each other. Okay. So I'm trying to solve for their speeds. So my variables are gonna be for speed. And I'm just gonna pick Bob arbitrarily. So B is equal to Bob's speed in kilometers per hour. And so I have my table and I'm gonna write B for Bob's speed. And I'm gonna write his time, which is 1.5 hours because they left at 12, they met at 1.30, that's 1.5 hours. And now if I want to, I can write a different equation or a different variable for Yardley's, um, but I'm actually not going to because I have this piece of information right here which relates their two speeds. So when you have something like this that relates the two speeds, I don't actually need two variables. I can use B for Bob and then 
give Yardley's t uh, speed in terms of Bob's speed. And so Bob was going four kilometers per hour faster, which means if I subtract off four from Yardley's, uh, Bob's speed, I get Yardley's speed. So I put a uh, B minus four in for Yardley's speed. She's also traveling for 1.5 hours. And then I think about their distances. Well, Bob's distance is rate, his rate times his time, which is 1.5 B, and Yardley's is 1.5 times the quantity B minus four. So I know those are those two distances. And now I'm gonna use this last piece of information, the 60 kilometers, because I know his distance plus her distance has to be 60. So 1.5 B plus 1.5 B minus four equals 60. So solving this equation right here will give me Bob's speed and subtracting four from it will give me Yardley's. I have another rate times distance problem. This one's round trip. So again, a very crude drawing. I have a Yardley on the ski lift going up and then Yardley skiing back down the mountain. And the information I have is that she's on the lift at six kilometers an hour and she's skiing at 34 kilometers an hour and the total travel time is 30 minutes. And so I have to figure out two things here. I have to figure out how long she's skiing and the distance she skied. So uh, since I have time, I'm going to solve for time, meaning my variable is going to be time. So T is going to be the time in hours because my rate dictates the unit of time, kilometers per hour, uh, skiing. So in my rate times distance table, T is going to be my time skiing. So if I solve this, the equation I write, it's going to give me one of the answers I was looking for. If I was looking for how long she was on the lift, then I would use that for time. Um, now that I have that, I know that the time skiing plus the time on the lift is 30 minutes. Now, I don't like this minute because my units are in hours, so I'm going to go ahead and convert that to hours. So make sure your units and your time and your units and your rate match up. So I have one half of an hour total. So that means that if I take the one half of the hour and I subtract off the time skiing, I'm going to get the time on the lift. Now I know this information is 6 and this is 34. And my distance is, I don't actually know the exact distance. That's one of the things I need to solve for. But I do know the equation is rate times time equals distance. So 6 times the 1 half minus t and the 34 times the t. The key aspect to a round trip problem is that the distance going to the location and the distance coming back from the location have to be equal. So the distance on the lift and the distance skiing are equal to each other. So this one variable gives means I need one equation. So 6 times 1 half minus t equals 34t is the equation I need to solve. This will give me the time she's traveling, and then I can just use this equation here, the 34t, to get the distance that I need.